Well, welcome to Florida. Last couple days it's been about 80 in the afternoons after work, so uh, I coated the whole quarter, quarter, covered the whole quarter with uh, filler. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably be sanding about 98% of that off now. So I'm just gonna get after it with my long pile and some 80 grit and then just uh, cut this down. So here we go. There it is with 80 grit and then I'll come back with 180 and then I'll prime it and then I'll block it and then probably have to prime it again but uh, I work in uh, sections right <clears throat> so right here's a body line right through here so I go from like here to here and then from there down is another set of sanding so, yeah. so there we go Right through there, up through there, and I got that. <clears throat> That's all nice and smooth now. Right here, it's blocked out and it's flat, so that's gonna be right there. As you can see right there is metal. Priming and blocking it will definitely tell me what's going on here more. Maybe something I can't feel with my hand, but yeah. So there it is. But I'm pretty happy with that, how that feels. Obviously, you guys can't feel it, but I can. Um, the other trick that I do is uh, these edges are, you know, they're a little rounded. But when I sand it, I sand it so they're sharp. Like this one, this one's still sharp right there. And then I'll just come back with the 80 and I'll just knock it down a little bit, just enough to get that curve, that soft edge in there. It looks a lot better that way. Like that's a soft edge now. All right guys, so this is gonna be it for tonight. Um, not bad for about an hour worth of work. Uh, but uh, we'll see how the rest of the week goes if it's in the 80s like it is now and the weekend Oh, man, this quarter will be done <clears throat> The fender will be done over here Right there and uh, Maybe we'll break out some primer and just prime sections of it. We'll see. All right. Catch you then. Bye What up guys? Okay, so it is Saturday Well, it's around noon now <clears throat> The owner stopped by this morning and uh, we swapped out his heater core since I had the whole front clip off and uh, then we uh, did some heater hoses and stuff like that so some mechanical stuff on the front end so now uh, throughout the week uh, I put in where I started body working the quarter panel since I'm done welding on it um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the trunk off now I already put the two little pilot holes on each side so when I put it back on it'll come right back up um, uh, other other things is uh, that piece for the cowl um, got shipped so we're waiting for that to come in so I can start tackling the, all the rust crap up underneath the, the or up on the cowl where the windshield goes and then um, I'll go in a little bit more into that in a little bit here but uh, for now let's take off the trunk and uh, then we'll start cleaning up that whole channel right through there, um, get that coated, uh, so you know, the rust and stuff like that, and then possibly start on the other quarter panel for the rust areas. Um, because once I finish this blocking it or roughing it all in uh, with the bodywork, um, I'm going to do wet on wet uh, primer. So I want to do the whole 
all this stuff with uh, the epoxy primer just kind of seals it all in, locks it in, and then then you wait about an hour, and then you go back with your power fill or your, well, in my case, power fill primer or your 2K primer over that, right? And then I got some uh, SEMS guide coat spray. I, I prefer the spray. You can also use like just like a flat black can uh, from you know hardware store or whatever. Um, I find that that clogs up the paper quicker than I would like. So, but the SEM stuff, um, I got it off Amazon. It's like 14 bucks for a can of it, and it goes a long way. So I'll spray that all out and uh, get that ready for the next section for blocking. But that way I can get this set, all, this was the bad quarter. Like this is the quarter that got hit with plywood. This is the quarter that had a, a really large amount of rust right through there that had to be replaced. The other quarter, not so bad. Just a little bit down on the corner, same spot here. Uh, right there, I gotta change out. And then a little bit above the rocker. And then over here, the fender. Right there, we welded up the hole there, like we did the previous, and then on those spots right there where I sanded out the, I sanded out the, well, ground out the fiberglass cloth stuff, and I just put a little bit of panel bond on each area where it went, sanded that with uh, 80 grit, and then I just went back with the, the filler and then filled that, so I still have to block that out and get that ready to prime as well, because I kind of want to prime as much stuff as once as I can because I hate cleaning my gun out, especially when you're doing wet on wet with epoxy. Epoxy is really nasty stuff. I mean, I'm gonna have to pull the orange out. I'm gonna have to pull my truck out um, because it just gets, it's, it's just everywhere. And I have, I have a big fan over there, right there. And then I'll have that blowing that way. So it goes out the back door over here. So that's just for the priming. By the time I get to the paint, hopefully I'll have my paint booth walls all set up and we'll be ready to go there. So let's, uh, let's start taking off the trunk and then we'll start wire wheeling all this stuff over here. Uh, and just one piece at a time, guys, just one piece at a time. That's how this works. So let's do it. I will tell you, those uh, those hinges for the trunk, those will kill you too if they spring up. There's a lot of tension underneath there, so just just kind of kind of be careful with those. Just like the hood ones, they'll kill you. Not so bad as the other side, just here and all the way up to about here and down. Now in here is a little worse, down through there and then a little bit right there, a little rust. And then up here is the same as the other side, right where these two pieces uh, lap together. Alrighty, not bad. So I'm going to use my little belt sander and I'm going to get all inside that channel up there as much as this will fit, get all the rust out of there and uh, go from there.
Alrighty, so we're going to start making a piece from right here. I'm going to do this in sections like I did the other side. It's easier for me to do it. So I'll do one here, and then put one in there, and then one down here. So let's get some metal. So I've got the piece made for this inner, inner structure part. So I don't cut this out because I'm using this as a form to make this piece. And then once we start getting into the cowl, you'll see exactly more in detail on that one. But it's just like the other side, right? So I'm going to do this just like I did the other side. I'm going to do this part first. And then I'll do this part there, right? And then I'll work on that inside. So there's the piece. So what I have to do is I have to bend this in a little bit more. So it's more up against here, this part. So I'm going to do that real quick. It's hard to set up the camera and do it. Let me see what I can come up with. Hold on. Okay guys, I got you set up on this magnetic thing that I hardly ever use ever. So, I hope you can hear me okay. I don't have a microphone or anything, so and I got a fan going, but so here we go. So we got that, so I gotta bring this one in a little. So all I'm doing is grabbing that and just bringing it in. Here. So there's piece one. I have a little bit of a gap here and here I'll have to fill, but that's pretty good. We'll weld it right here. This piece will fix once we get this on, and then this one right here, the same once we get this piece on. So it's going to be one, two, and then three. And there it goes.
So I got this piece cut out right here. This is just tacked here just to hold that upper piece in place. But that's welded, grinded down. So I'm gonna finish this all out once I get this piece in there. And then I gotta weld it along in there. But yeah, looking pretty good. So I'm gonna find a piece of metal. The one that I did, whoops, the one that I did have. Oh, it's just a tad bit short. So uh, let me get a piece of metal. I have a bunch of metal sitting around over there. So let me go through it and find one. Be right back. So I've always wanted one of these things. It's basically a big metal shear. Um, this is a five inch. You can get uh, eight or 10, 12 inch. But uh, you know, it was like, it was like $68 off from Amazon. And I'll tell you, I got to figure out a permanent mounting place, but uh, half of my stuff that I have here, I got to figure out a home for them. So as I get with the working of the flow, I'll figure out how I want to mount everything, but it's, it's real good. Supposedly does up to like eighth inch or three sixteenth quarter, I don't know. But there's a lot of leverage here and yep, I just gotta trim up that line. But you know what? I like it. Alright, back over there. So with this patch, what I'm doing is the other way that I was explaining. Uh, so I've got the one line lined up, and now I'm going to trim it and then tilt it in to fit the other line. So this is just another way you can do it. So that's why I'm going to show you this way. Uh, so 
hold on here. So this line right here is right. This this one on the inside overhangs about an eighth of an inch, right? So I'm going to trim this side to match that side and then push it down and tack it in. So now we're, whoops, so now we're flush here. We've got our line here, we'll tack. Right there is probably going to be a bear because this metal is thin right here. And then right here, we just tack it all the way down there. All the way through there. Oops, there we go, like that. And this, this is just, uh, no. The old quarter wrapped around to there. So I got that piece in. I got one of those pieces in here, right there. So now let's tack this up here, probably another one here, a couple here, and then down here, and then probably another one right there. And then, uh, then we'll go through and we'll tack and cool as we go. All right, guys. So I'm taking a break from here because this just blown. The metal is just blown apart. So I'm just gonna move on to something else here, and I'll come back to that. Uh, it's kind of like how it goes. So what I did was I treated the entire channel. Let me uh, flip you around here. So I ground out all the crap that was underneath here, and then uh, all the metal that's all like missing. Well, the problem is, is that this piece right here goes down and around, right? And then this inner piece here just sits on top. So there is, if you see it, right there, there we go, right there, there's a lip. So water gets behind there, and then it starts eating out the channel. So what I did was uh, I wire wheeled that all out and then all up in here because I have a small tiny hole right there and then I still have a tiny hole right right there and then here is where I've already fixed through here that whole section right there and then down through here so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take panel bond and then I'm gonna push it all up in that lip so water can't get back behind it and then it's the same up here you can see it that lip the water just slides right in there and then it just sits there and just eats out the metal so I gotta let that sit overnight so what I'm doing now is I'm just cleaning up all this rust off this all the surface rust all off off that basically getting things prepped up for replacing this because I should have this panel in by the end of next week and then uh, I'm gonna get a Chevelle panel that comes up to here um, looking online and stuff I'm not gonna take credit for this at all but uh, looking online uh, so the dashes for the Oldsmobile it's actually like one whole piece, right? So this would normally come down and it comes down and then lifts up right here. All right, so it's part of the window channel. And the problem is, is that, let me show you on the other side, where there's just a little bit left. So right here. So this part actually goes down and then up on that lip. So the dash is part of the window channel. So from the factory, there is a little, it's like a water intrusion, right? So the lip comes up, this comes down, and they don't fill in the seam all the way along. And that's what causes this very thing. So this piece that's from a Chevelle actually sits 
like this. It's like a repair panel for the Chevelle's dashes, 68. So once I get this piece in, I need to get that piece so I can form all this, cut this all the way along here, and then this whole, this that Chevelle piece will be welded here to take care of all the dash issues. And then when it comes down, it welds onto the new piece that I'm waiting for, and it comes right there. But right now, I'm just kind of cleaning up all this rough metal, uh, getting all the urethane off it, so I can start attacking that stuff right there. So I always got something to do. So let me wire wheel that up and get all that urethane crap out of there, and then we'll treat it, and then go from there. Okay, so the whole point was cleaning out all the urethane stuff and then uh, seeing which of these little tabs are still good, which ones are about to fall out, but actually they're all still solid in there. Um, yeah, it's hard to, there you go. So, and then right here is another lead joint and it was cracking right there and right there. And then I want to clean all the crap out of that channel it goes right through there I got to get a smaller wire brush to get all that out and then I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna apply panel bond all the way around in there because they have a tendency of the water sits in here and then just rusts that's what it did back here right there so I pulled it all out and I'm treating down inside the channel until I get to replace that piece so I'll cut out a little section like that, put it in, and then just weld it around. So, now that I got that all cleaned out, I'm going to uh, run my rust converter, stop rust stuff all along the channel. This side is actually really good, except right there. Yeah, that way it'll give it a smooth surface uh, with no rust once I uh, once the windshield goes back in. All right, let me do that.
good morning guys so it's uh it's not bad today today's around 60 degrees it's supposed to start getting cold uh throughout the week back down in the 40s so today i'm going to uh clean out that entire channel i'm gonna try this little wire wheel first if that doesn't work then i'll just get uh my my cutoff wheel with a little disc and just get in there and clean it all up um, because down through here <clears throat> I want to put uh, panel bond in there and smooth it all out. Uh, it looks really nice um, and it's better than the sealant stuff that just cracks over time. So I'm going to set this up and let's see if we can get it done. Starting to work on the fender as well. There, I already got those all sanded down flat. That's where I welded in the hole. And there, one more swipe down there and we should be good to go on that. And then with this body line right here. So what I do is I put my thumb, my finger on that line and then I hold that and then I just trace it out. So right here you can see my body line is lost from there to here. So I'll have to put that back in. So let's get to sanding all this stuff. Alright guys, so I finished the bottom. I got the line back in there. So uh, I get this off Amazon. It's 14 bucks a can and well worth it. Uh, you can use regular like flat black spray paint or whatever for that. But I find that that clogs up the paper a little too quick. So right now this is all roughed in, with, well not roughed in, but pretty close to with uh, 80 grit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over it with the SEMS guide coat. And I like this better than the powder as well because the powder is all all over the place. But like I said, 14 bucks Amazon. It goes a long way. So I'm gonna kind of coat this with this and then let that set up or dry, which only takes probably a couple minutes. And then it's all about blocking it uh, with 180. Okay. come back once that sets up and uh, we'll block it. I'm gonna work on the fender for a little bit and then um, we'll get back. Alrighty, I got 180 on the file. So let's just start blocking this off with the guide coat and see how straight we get it.
Okay, let me flip you around and see, show you what I got going on. All right, so what the guide coat does is it shows you lows. So I know that's low, that's a little low, right there, and then right here is low. So even though it feels right, guide coat never lies. So you basically just block that out until it's all flat and even. Yep. So that's what I'm going to do. So there's the quarter. It's all been blocked out with 180 now. I know it looks kind of weird in that area, but it's, it's completely smooth right through there. Yep. Yepper. So, um, other good thing about doing like doing went or doing 80 grit and then, um, doing the guide coat and then come back with 180 is that, uh, the 180 takes out the 80 grit scratches, right? So now I know this entire panel is 180 grit because I have no more sand scratches from the 80 grit because they're blocked out with the 180. So, um, I mean, you could you could prime this, or not prime it, but guide coat it again and then block it again with 180. I'm not that fanatic about this, um, so I'm, I'm not going to do that. Uh, what I will be doing is when I do the primer, I'll be doing a guide coat and then uh, I'll be blocking it all out with 320. And if there's no issues or whatever, like, you know, things come up, whatever, uh, then I'll reprime it and then block it again with 320. I paint over 320 and this will be sealed. So it's, it'll be, uh, you know, primer, block with 320. If there's no other issues, uh, sealed painted cleared right so right now that's all straight so now I'm gonna get back on the fender over here Boop. and then do the same process with that and then those two items should be ready for primer right but I told you all about what I'm doing over on the other side so I'm not priming today okay so I'll be back all right, guys, we're going to peel this inside piece off. It's going to be hard to get back there because of the roll cage, but I got to take these inner, inner quarter panel pieces off. So I have to pull off. <clears throat> he doesn't have door handles or door window cranks for the back, so I got to pull off this crank right here. I'm going to use that one to put on the back, but they got this little clip. This one right here, you can see really well. So right there. So it's got this little clip thing. Um, don't lose these. I mean, you can get new ones, but basically you just kind of pull them off. They make a tool, let me put that back on. They make a tool that you can use to snap them, you know, to pull them off. But um, yeah, I think it's time to take the door panels apart. Uh, while I'm letting stuff work out, I'm going to take that one off, that one off over there, pull off that back one, and then pull off this other one on this side. So uh, I can't really set up the camera inside there to get there. I don't even know how I'm going to get back there. Probably weasel my way in between there and there. Uh, yesterday when we were doing the heater core, I was up underneath. And I told him, I was like, man, we got to take this roll cage out, or at least this bar. He's not going to do it, but it's okay. I thought it was funny. All righty then. So let me get back there, peel the panels apart. Basically, uh, they're just little clips that hold this all on. I can at least show you that. So you can see it right there. There's like a little push pin, and that's all that's holding these things on. So let me start getting to this. I'll show you. I'll take this one off on camera, and then it'll be the rest for the rest of them. This is the easiest one I can get to that you'll be able to see. So you pull that little clip off. So there's one here, 
the one on this little guy right here that cranks that guy and then there's one down here don't lose these they can go springing across the whole shop I'm going to use that door handle to finish rolling down that window, take that one, take the other ones apart, and we'll be right back after we get it all apart.
mud daubers and spiders. All right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap up this weekend of fun sanding. So, uh, yeah, that that's uh, kind of burnt out from sanding, right? So I'm just going to clean up uh, the shop. It's already after 4 on Sunday. So um, hopefully I will get the piece in for the cowl that I've been mentioning throughout the video. And uh, prob if I do get it in, then probably next weekend we'll start diving into the front. Since I've already prepped all the metal around the windshield area like that, I've got the door panels all apart and the quarter glass panels uh, taken off so I can drop those to get the felty things off uh, because I want to get all that off when I prime this this stuff. Uh, the other the other quarter panel that I put in the patch, um, I'm probably going to just end up just cutting out a little bit more metal and then putting in another piece so it extends it out farther because it keeps blowing through. I mean, this is what happens when you do a build, right? You get all, it's like, go, 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 go. And then it's like, okay. And then you slow down and do this. And really how much fun is it to watch me sand filler? Not, not so much. So this is kind of how builds go. Uh, the first, first couple, two, three videos is pretty much like you, you see more progress, right? Cutting out metal, bending metal, stretching it, shrinking it, welding it in. And then it's this kind of tedious stuff that uh that uh i don't know you start dropping off a little bit because it, it, it's really not a lot of fun i mean let's be honest uh i think i think we kind of got the whole idea of uh of that whole sanding stuff and how i do it with the, the guide coat and like i said that stuff is amazing for 14 bucks off amazon just get it because it, now i've got like i said now i have all the 80 grit scratches out it's now in 180 and it's smooth and flat, right? So anything else I'm going to do with the sanding stuff, uh, I'll probably just, just do it. Um, so it may be a couple weeks for me to get uh, another video up if that piece doesn't come in. If it does, then we'll have something exciting. If not, then we'll wait until I get that piece and then we'll have something exciting. So anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate you guys just coming in here and uh, taking a peek at what we got going on and uh, making it through the video. If you get, get make it this far, uh, skip ahead, skip back, whatever. I really appreciate it all. Um, again, that'll be it for this weekend, and I will catch you on the next one. And go out there and build something cool. Catch you on the next one. Bye.